share to you today the marriage tool that I developed to help our relationship or my relationship. Right, so starting up. So it's really important when you want to start working on your relationship to set up some time that nothing will distract you or your spouse. And also choose a time that you are awake. Now, mornings, bad for me. I'm sleepy. And evenings, night times, afternoons, bad for my wife. She's sleepy. So we have to find that spot where we can have time that we're not distracted and we are wide awake. Or else we, we're not really present for this special time with our wives. I want to talk about marriage and uh, that's so important to me, my marriage and my family. So I'm, a, I'm an imperfect husband and I do not claim to be the role model in marriage. But I'm still married after 30 years and you know what? There's ups and downs and there's times when, when it's really difficult and there's times which is really, really great. But I think that's the way most marriages are. Well, in any case, my marriage is that way. But what I have to do is really got to, I really got to lead and do something and not just let my marriage be. I need to be proactive and try and do something to keep my marriage in a, in a good place or move my marriage to a good place. So, so I want to inspire you to, to own up and improve in your marriage. So God has engineered us into all kinds of relationships, friendships and marriage. And marriage is really a very special relationship because it's unconditional and it's a commitment that you make irrespective of the outcomes. Unlike a friendship, friendships sometimes break up and we move on, but a marriage is not that way. And we are not really compatible. And I, but we love one another and that is why we stay one another. I know I can say for myself that my wife and I, we are so different. I, we are on absolutely the two scales. We do a compatibility, compatibility test on the internet once and immediately rejected us as a possible partner. So we still married after 30 years. Why? I think two reasons. One. We are really following God in God's way. And two, we have decided to, to keep commitment towards one another. So, so marriage is challenging. But I hope this video will help you with a few uh, practical steps on how to keep on working on your marriage. It's definitely helping me and I hope it'll, it'll help you as well. My name is Stein van Weyck and I'm just an ordinary disciple of Jesus Christ. Marriage, we usually say, is a 50-50 contribution, but that's also not true. Marriage is an unconditional 100% commitment from each partner. So this video is going to give you eight practical points which you can do with your wife. First one, pray together. Pray builds spiritual and emotional intimacy, which is so important for a relationship. Marriage is better when it's centered around God and His plan. And He designed marriage and He's the author of love. So God in your marriage will immediately put you in a good place. Without God, there's no real standard to build this relationship on. And that might be difficult. So prayer is great because we learn one another's hearts while we pray, our pains, our joys, our needs, and what's really going on inside your heart. Second point, learn from God. Ephesians teaches that men should wash their wives, making them holy, to the washing through the word. We need to both hear and learn from God's word. So we, what we do is we make turns to read scripture to one another and, and talk about what we've learned. But we really try and open up the Bible and do something together. Even if it's short, 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, really depends on your partner uh, uh, capacity for the time you're going to spend in the scriptures. Here's a tip. Don't teach and preach or lecture. Just share scriptures and be very relaxed about what are you busy learning in the scriptures. Because if you're going to go into teach and, 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 and lecture mode, it's not going to work for your partner. 
So open up God's Word and read together from the Scriptures. Moving on to number three. What I appreciate about you. We all need encouragement and we all need to be built up. So it's good to recognize our partner's strength and whatever they've done uh, well. So we often forget to give that positive soul food to one another. So make turns and give one another some positive words. Positive words go really very far. Number four is how did I hurt you? What did not go well this week? So the scripture teaches that we need to, to deal with our hurt and our unforgiveness immediately before the sun goes down. And that's in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 and Matthew 5 verse 23 to 25. But sometimes things are not resolved. And, and that might be more often than what we think. It may be unresolved or it may simply, we might simply have just been too busy to really talk about things and resolve it. But this is a good time to go back to those things that you haven't resolved and an opportunity to heal those pains and reunite. So we all have good intentions and we want to forgive on the spot. But you know what? Sometimes our hearts are slower to turn than others. I know my heart is one that turns slowly. So sometimes uh, I need like a second and even sometimes a a third conversation just to get my heart to turn and that's really sorry but that's really the way I, I am and I need to keep on working at that so here's a tip if you are on the receiving end of this person that is that is saying uh, they are hurt just keep quiet and don't try and defend yourself at once uh, in your response first agree with the truths that the person is saying and, and don't react emotionally um, uh, without understanding. Be very apologetic anyway in, in your response at the time, even if the person that was hurt was in the wrong. It just helps them to get to a better place to continue the conversation. Point number five, saying sorry and making amends. Here's an example of how to say sorry because sorry doesn't always do it because it's either from a heart that's not really turned or it is from uh, or, it's, or the other person need to hear a little bit more or it, or it needs to you know, clarify what are you really sorry for and do you understand what you're sorry for. So, so, let's, so that this is all takes patience and, and a bit of pain. So, uh, but you know what? No pain, no gain. Um, uh, so here we go. So the example would be, I understand that uh, what I've done or said has hurt you and maybe this and make you feel uncomfortable or, or whatever, whatever hurt you want to describe. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was not my intention or maybe it was your intention. So I'm sorry that I intentionally or unintentionally hurt you and how can I make amends so you probably got to be careful what you say here when you're sorry because when you say I or I was in unintentional and you were intentional well that's deceitful and then it kind of doesn't it kind of eliminates that sorry so as soon as you say sorry and your sorry is not sincere or there's falseness or or deception inside the sorry it's probably just not going to be like a watered down sorry so you got to make sure when you say sorry you really mean it so you got to dig deep and like I say no pain no gain this is definitely the most challenging part of all is the is the sorry saying because that means you got to give up yourself and humble yourself out and, and just go to that place of hey <laughs> I've messed up. Sorry is not really always about wrong or right. So you could be, could have been wrong or right, um, but it's it's probably a lot about what how the other pe person felt. So uh, whether you were in your right 
you still, the other person felt bad about it, and that's enough to say sorry for that other person. Same. So in the case where I was right and maybe my partner was wrong, I would still say something like, I'm really sorry that this has hurt you. And again, it wasn't my intention, but you know, I, I just love you and I'm sorry that I, that I hurt you or that you are hurt anyway. Um, this is probably where most of the healing takes place. And this can patch up a marriage if we keep on saying sorry in a in a right way, not just the short I'm sorry, but this great I'm sorry and a conversation about the sorry. So if you do this well, you're going to mend a lot of wounds. So explain how you think you made your spouse feel and use the word sorry clearly and often. Point number six is, um, is a little bit more back to Jesus' example of being a servant. And here we could say, um, for one another, we are here in, for, in this 100%, 100% relationship, giving 100%, 100%. And of course, we are going to want to serve one another. So number six is, how can I serve you how can I serve you ask your spouse how you can serve her better this week we are called to be servants like Christ for one another and we married to serve one another let's keep on serving one another on all the areas of our needs and we have many needs we have emotional needs we have physical needs, we have intimacy in our marriage, but also we have spiritual needs. And it's really good to, to have that conversation. And I guess being vulnerable, I actually don't like to say what I need. I'm too stubborn and prideful, so I keep quiet what I need. Uh, but So sometimes my partner needs to fish it out. What is it that I need? Because I'm like, I don't want to take anything from you kind of uh, attitude. And that's not really right on my part, but that's kind of who I am. And I need to keep on working on that. So I need to learn to be more open and say what I need. And, uh, and then, uh, and of course, uh, I will go and ask, what is it that you need? And then let's serve one another uh, this week. This will also patch up things a lot more. And, um, and now the hurt, now it's more than the hurt. We move past the hurt. So the hurt is like maybe dealt with us at this time. And now we are building bricks on top of this foundation that we have in our marriage, which is really, really great. So let's serve one another and ask, what can I do to serve you and in which area? All right. So number seven, what do I love about you? So we're back at, uh, uh, just building up against because we want to close off this this little session of how can I build you what I love about you end off with a high build each other up good words go so far and we, we want to keep on like we talked about now being serving and now what I love about you so you really like this is really going to put you you in a, at a good place um, so the thing is, what I love about you is your patience for me and your hard work or your dedication or how you look after the children or your beauty. I just love how beautiful you are or generosity uh, or your love for God or, or your, your kind nature to other people, whatever it might be. So that's a great one. And my turn to say that to one another, uh, what you love about one another. Encourage, encouragement is food for our souls. We close off. Back to prayer. So number eight, we're going to go back to closing off the, with prayer. And what we can do here is pray. We should unite us. At this point, we take everything we discuss back to God uh, because we are now more united as a couple. We, we're a team in God's kingdom. And we can also talk about how we're going to serve God, this, this ministry. What, what are we going to do together as a couple? Who are, how are we going to advance God's kingdom uh, together and, and talk about that? And then we pray about uh, in unity, you know, maybe some apologies and, and maybe confess some sin and, and, and worship God and just uh, appreciate Jesus for what he's done for us on the cross. So, um, you know, it's going to make keep us on our focus spiritual and on a spiritual path. 
I hope this marriage tool will lead you closer to God and help you and your family and your marriage and help you to stay together. I want to end off to encourage ordinary men to stand up and lead. And what I mean by leading is, is don't wait for your wife to lead, but lead as the head of your marriage. And by leading, I mean that you lead by imitating Christ and being a servant or serving in your marriage. So my name is Stein van Weyck and I'm an ordinary disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.